So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to design a video streaming service that adapts to different types of clients and has low latency for watching video for our users. So let's take a look at a basic architecture diagram of what this is going to look like. So we're of course going to have some sort of API that our users are interacting with, and we're going to want to have some sort of storage medium that we can use to hold our raw video files. So for now, we can assume that these are going to be simple MP4 files that we want to stream to our users. Once we have this API in our blob store, we can then send those video files to our users. However, it's worth noting that those video files are very large, and it's going to take a long time to send those. So if we're thinking about a very basic protocol for this, we could simply have our API download the data from our blob store and then send it to our user over HTTP. So what this would look like is our client would make an initial request to our server, and our server would then make its initial request to our storage service. We then have to transfer the video from storage to our server, and then we have to transfer the video from our server to our client. Once all of that is done, then our client can start playing the video. You'll notice that the transfer to the client takes a bit longer than the transfer from storage to server, since our client's network is probably going to be a lot slower than the local network between our server and our storage. So this is clearly a problem. We now have to wait a very long time between the initial request and our video playback starting. This is going to be pretty annoying for the client. We can make a bit of an optimization to this problem by chunking our video into smaller pieces. So our client still makes its initial request, but our server, instead of downloading the entire video file, will only download the first, say, 100 megabytes. This is something that can be done with HTTP range requests, where we're requesting a specific portion of the bytes of a file. So our server downloads that first 100 megabytes, and then sends that down to the client, and as it's sending the data to the client, our server can now already start going down and getting the next piece of data from the storage. It can then stream that to the client, etc, etc, etc. What this means is that our video playback now starts after that first chunk of data has been sent to the client. We can then continue watching the video as the rest of the data is loaded in. If we made this chunk much smaller than 100 megabytes, this gap between the initial request and the video playback starting would get even lower. So we still have a bit of a problem here if our client has a very slow network. Our client might not be able to finish downloading the content at the rate that it's playing it back. So we could end up having choppy video. So Let's consider that our client downloads a one minute segment of video from the server for that first chunk. It can then start playing that video and it'll play for one minute. But if that one minute segment takes two minutes to download, our client now has to sit here and buffer waiting for the second segment of video for one minute. So this means that the client is going to be watching for one minute, then waiting a minute, then watching another minute, then waiting a minute. And this is clearly a pretty bad user experience for our client. So we'd like to be able to make that download faster so that even if it's not as good of quality, our user can still watch the video uninterrupted. This is called adaptive bitrate. We want our faster clients to be able to download the higher quality video, but if our client detects that it's downloading very slowly, it should be able to go out to our server and request a lower quality version of that content. That lower quality version will, of course, download load much faster and allow our client to stream in real time. If our client's network gets slower or improves as the video is playing, it should be able to adjust the bitrate and the quality of the video as it's playing. So in order to get this lower quality data, we really want to have that available ahead of time. Our server isn't going to be able to transcode that video into a lower quality, smaller version fast enough to be able to actually send it to the client in time. So we want that data to actually be stored in our storage at both the lower quality and the higher quality. So what our blob store is going to look like now is it's going to have multiple chunks of our data, and for each chunk of data, we're going to have that data in multiple formats. So for example, in this case, we've split our video into four chunks, and for each of those four chunks, we're storing the full bitrate version, a slightly lower bitrate, and the lowest bitrate possible. Depending on the client's network situation, we can serve to them any one of these versions for every single chunk that they want to download. This of course comes at the cost of much higher storage space. Of course, the lower bitrate versions take less storage space to store, but since we have to include multiple copies of this, we could be significantly increasing the amount of storage size that we need to have for this data. However, being able to adapt to our clients and serve them multiple bit rates is certainly worth this trade-off for most situations. If you want to learn more about how these blob storage systems are able to store such large quantities of data and still scale, you should check out our blob storage video as part of our systems fundamentals course on interviewpen.com. So there are certainly existing solutions out there that do this adaptive bit rate switching for clients. The two major ones are called HLS and MPEG Dash. These are pretty close to the same protocol in terms of what they do. HLS is supported amongst Apple products, 
and MPEG Dash is sort of the standard for any other platform. Most video streaming services that you'll encounter will actually support both of these in order to maintain compatibility with all sorts of systems. Neither HLS nor MPEG Dash is a container format for video. Both of these protocols allow you as the developer to pick which type of video codec you want to use, depending on the situation and what trade-offs you want when compressing that data. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more content like this on interviewpen.com. We have tons of more in-depth system design and data structures and algorithms content for any skill level, along with a full coding environment and an AI teaching assistant. You can also join our Discord, where we're always available to answer any questions you might have. If you or a friend wants to master the fundamentals of software engineering, check us out at interviewpen.com.